Should you host your own podcast RSS feed? Thanks to your support, The Productive Woman, The Audacity to Podcast, and Once, Once Upon a Time Podcast are finalists in the 11th Annual People's Choice Podcast Awards. Thank you very much. Please show your continued awesomeness by voting for our podcast every day, May 29th through June 12th. For quick instructions, our endorsements, and voting reminders, please go to noodle.mx slash podcast awards. And thank you for your amazing support. Welcome to the Audacity to Podcast, episode 270. Thank you for joining me for the Audacity to Podcast. I'm Daniel J. Lewis, and this is the award-winning in-depth podcast about podcasting. It's where I give you the guts and teach you the tools to launch or improve your own podcast for sharing your passions and finding success. Because your RSS feed is the life of your podcast, where you host it is crucial for ownership and control. So here are some things for you to consider whether you should host your feed yourself. Now, feed ownership and hosting are hotly debated, uh, especially among the podcast hosting companies out there. And each side has some valid arguments, and I'll address more of those shortly. It often comes down to two things, ownership and reliability. And ultimately, the choice is yours to make. But here are some things for you to consider along the way. I want to talk about owning your podcast RSS feed and what that is, how reliable your podcast RSS feed truly is, and then I have four reasons why you may not want to host your own podcast RSS feed, and four reasons why you may want to host your own podcast RSS feed. If you'd like the show notes for this episode, number 270, go to theaudacitypodcast.com slash host your feed. Let's start with what does it really mean to own your podcast RSS feed? There are several definitions for this. One side of ownership says that you only own your feed if it's on a URL you control, like your own domain. It's myawesomepodcast.com, not wordpress.com or some other website.com. The other side says you own your feed as long as you can redirect it via a 301 permanent redirect wherever and whenever you want. And I think that both sides are right and are not mutually exclusive. At its core, owning your feed means that no one can take it away from you. You can switch your podcasting technology and keep your audience. You're in control of what goes into your feed. With some third-party feed creation tools, you can add a layer of ownership with your own domain. This could be through a 302 or 307 temporary redirect. The reason you would want temporary instead of permanent is because if you set up a permanent redirect from your own domain to someone else's RSS feed, then you forfeited control and ownership with your own domain. You're just telling everyone, don't use my domain, use the other domain. That's why you want a 302 or 307 temporary redirect is to say you're passing the request on, but you're telling the apps, don't change the URL that you have. That's not really the best way of doing it, though. What would be better is through some advanced DNS mapping, such as the My Brand feature in FeedBurner gives you, and several other tools do give you this kind of freedom. But such freedom may come at a higher cost. Maybe you need a different registrar for your domain. Maybe you need to unlock extra managed DNS options. Maybe you need to pay extra with your hosting company in order to map your own domain to your media and your RSS feed. But I do think that would be worth it. So owning your podcast RSS feed means that at any time you can do anything you want with it. And one of the ways that you may be able to do that is by using your own URL for your podcast RSS feed and not the URL from some third-party tool. Now I want to challenge you on something. How truly reliable is your podcast RSS feed? With very few exceptions, and those are currently Google Play Music, Stitcher, Spotify, and a couple other podcast apps, when someone subscribes to your podcast, they subscribe directly to your RSS feed. Thus, 
it really doesn't matter to your audience if the podcast directory, such as iTunes, doesn't work or if it kicks your show out because your audience gets your episodes from you via the RSS feed, that is. They're not getting your episodes from the directory. That's why you typically see the podcasting experts respond when someone says, why isn't my latest episode showing up in iTunes? It really doesn't matter to your subscribers because they're getting the episode from your RSS feed. So as long as your episode is in the RSS feed, then your subscribers can get it as well. If your podcast RSS feed goes down, your podcast episodes will then be inaccessible for downloading. However, this won't affect those who have already downloaded the episodes. Your website could crash, your feed could be down, but if they already have the episodes, they can listen to them whenever they want. It's not like it deletes the episodes that they have already downloaded from whatever app they use. Similarly, if the feed is up, but the server hosting your media, your MP3 files or video files, go down, then no one can download your new episodes even though they can access your RSS feed. And in either case, if your feed or your media hosting are inaccessible for an extended period, your show will probably be removed from the podcast directories. So make sure that if there's a problem, that problem doesn't exist for very long. For nearly every podcaster, we're at the mercy of something outside our control with our podcast feeds. So don't think that you can ever 100% own your RSS feed because you can't. That's, that's really not possible. Now, there's, there's probably that one podcaster out there who is running their own server. They have their own internet service provider. They have their own power company. They, they have all of this stuff that they own and control themselves. So if anything goes down, it's totally their fault and they can fix it. They don't rely on anyone else. There's probably one podcaster out there like that. But for the rest of us, we do rely on other things outside of our control. Server hardware could fail. It happens quite often. A network could go down. A company could go out of business and more. Even if you run your own server and have your own domain, you're still at the mercy of the network connection to that server as well as the reliability of your DNS provider. And the DNS is what makes the domain work. So if you visit the audacity to podcast.com, where is that routed to on the internet? If a DNS provider goes down or a domain registrar goes down, which has happened before, it's happened to me, I've seen it happen to other people, either podcasters or just website owners. If that DNS goes down, then anything tied to that domain goes down as well. So because of this and some other factors too, no RSS feed is 100% reliable. Nearly everyone gives up a little control and must put their trust in someone else's stability. That said, some providers have proven themselves more trustworthy than others with protections, redundancies, and a high priority to keep your feed and media hosting online. Blueberry and Libsyn are the two companies that have been around long enough to prove their reliability, which is why you hear me and many others recommend these two providers so often. They've proven themselves, and yes, even they have had some problems here and there, but it's, it's a problem every few years, not every couple of months. Spreaker and Podbean are good too, and I'm building a relationship with them and testing some of their platform as well. But they they don't have as thorough of experience as Blueberry and Libsyn do. They haven't had as much time to really prove themselves, their stability, their speed, and other aspects of their performance. So that's why I'm still sticking to those two top recommendations, Blueberry and Libsyn. And by the way, if you want to sign up for any of these four companies, Blueberry, Libsyn, Spreaker, or Podbean, if you use the promo code NOODLE, you'll get a free month with any of them. Even FeedBurner, by the way, and that is when you have its questionable features disabled, that's SmartCast, the stats, any of those, basically anything that you can enable, don't. But even FeedBurner in its raw state has proven itself fairly reliable, certainly more reliable than shared hosting or some low-end, quote, podcast hosting, unquote, providers. So FeedBurner is still kind of a reasonable option, but it doesn't have my full recommendation 
due to its questionable future. But I don't want to be a doomsayer and get into all of the rumors and concerns and that. I've talked previously about FeedBurner. I'll probably talk more about FeedBurner again in the future. But it is still somewhat a reasonable option if you're using the My Brand feature, which allows you to use your own domain with your FeedBurner account. That's what I do with Noodle Mix Network is the feeds do go through FeedBurner for that extra reliability and stability. But the feed URLs are my own domains. That's a little bit more advanced, but it is something that's possible to do with the My Brand feature inside of FeedBurner. So keep that in mind that there is no 100% reliable solution. It's impossible. We live in an imperfect world. You can't have 100% stability. Something will break at some point. So you want to then Put your trust in a company that has proven themselves to reduce those problems, to fix those problems extremely quickly when they happen, and that prioritize keeping your podcast online, which is much more than I can say for certain other low-end companies who recently broke podcast feeds or broke podcast downloads or broke different aspects of podcasts for several days. Yikes. Don't put your trust in those companies. Put trust in higher reputable companies. I have those links if you're interested in the show notes for this episode, number 270 at the audacity to podcast.com slash host your feed. So now here are four reasons why you may not want to host your own podcast RSS feed. Let me use Libsyn as my first example here because they are the only third-party feed creation service that I can fully recommend. They create a great RSS feed. It's very stable. It's very extendable as well, and it supports SEO features and all of this other great stuff as well as reputable, high-quality, trustworthy stats. Libsyn can create and host your RSS feed for you, whereas FeedBurner merely re-hosts the RSS feed that you give it So you're already creating an RSS feed. FeedBurner doesn't create it for you. And then FeedBurner can optionally, quote, enhance, unquote, your non-podcast feed with what they call SmartCast. But please, SmartCast is one of the worst things inside of FeedBurner. And never use the SmartCast feature if the feed that you're putting into FeedBurner as your original feed is a podcast feed already. Because then SmartCast is completely unnecessary. It's helpful if you can't create a podcast RSS feed, like you're on WordPress.com or Blogger or something like that. But otherwise, SmartCast, stay away from that. Now, the information I'm about to share with you is repurposed from a blog post that I wrote called Why You May Not Want to Host Your Own Podcast RSS Feed. Here are the four reasons. Number one, website stability. When your podcast RSS feed is on the same server as your website, you do risk hindering your podcast downloads when your website has problems because the two are connected. Even when your web host promises 99.99% uptime, that actually leaves 53 minutes of potential downtime per year, but you could likely see more than that. If you're featured somewhere and a thousand people try to load your website at the same time, It could crash your website, and if your website is down, then it takes down your RSS feed with it. Plugins like PowerPress are great for making and managing your RSS feed, and if you want extra stability, you could consider using Angelo Mandato's Static Feed plugin for WordPress, and that can reduce how much work your website has to do to serve an XML file for your RSS feed. Instead of dynamically generating it every time, it's a static file on your site so that it's serving one file, not hundreds of queries. I talked more about that in the last episode about reducing the size of your RSS feed. But even a static file on your website will be inaccessible if your server crashes. So this is reason number one why you may not want to host your own podcast RSS feed, website stability. Number two, bandwidth requirements. There is no hard rule about the size of your RSS feed, but good guidelines are to make your feed smaller than 512 kilobytes or smaller than one megabyte. And if for no other reason, be considerate of your subscribers who have to download that feed every time their podcast app checks for new episodes. Now listen to my last episode, number 267, where I talked about how to shrink your RSS feed and why it's important to have a small RSS feed. 
While your RSS feed is not as big as your media files, the feed would be downloaded more often and could actually cause more problems on your server than hosting your own media on your server. It's not all that likely, but it is still possible, and it depends on how many subscribers you have, what apps are they using, and how often do their apps check your RSS feed for new episodes. That's number two reason why you may not want to host your own podcast RSS feed, bandwidth requirements. Number three reason, feed volatility. This is the most cited reason for generating and hosting your podcast feed away from your own website content management system, or CMS, like WordPress. It's true that some themes and plugins or buried website options can break your RSS feed. It could be user error, it could be developer error, it could be something else. And this happens when any of these insert invalid information into your feed, or they change how the tags in your RSS feed are populated, maybe they strip functionality, or they have some other kind of poor coding that causes a conflict with whatever plugin you are using to make your podcast RSS feed. And I've helped several podcasters before with my flat rate standard feed repair service, and I've seen membership plugins, SEO plugins, some themes, and yes, even simple user error break podcast feeds. Yes, it is possible to break your podcast RSS feed even with popular plugins, and the more plugins that you have on your site, the more chances there are that something could break. But before you panic, realize that as long as you use tested, respected, and well-written plugins and stick with only what you truly need on your website, the chances of breaking your feed are quite low. But if you don't want to risk it, either use your media host feed as long as you can own it, and that is to redirect it anywhere you want, whenever you want, or protect your feed with FeedBurner. And again, that is with no features enabled. Because FeedBurner, after all, can keep your feed online even when that source feed is down. But your feed won't update with new episodes if your source feed is down or if FeedBurner can't correctly update your feed. The new episodes won't go out, but at least your feed stays online. But still, even in this case, or using your media host, Consider mapping that with your own domain. That's reason number three, feed volatility. Reason number four, why you may not want to host your own podcast RSS feed, dangers on shared hosting. Many of us host our websites on shared website hosting. Shared hosting is where there could be hundreds or thousands of websites running on the same server. And if you host your website and podcast feed on a shared hosting provider, then you could be the victim of someone else's abuse or mistake on the same server. On a shared hosting platform, every account has equal access to the server's resources. And if someone else's account hogs those resources, it could be through some compromise, maybe their website was hacked, maybe they're doing something abusive on their site, maybe they have some bad code on their site, then it does affect the rest of the accounts on that server up to thousands of other websites. Look at this from a practical example here. I now rent office space for my business and for my podcast, and I really like having detached office space and having my business separate from my home. I wouldn't recommend that for the hobby podcaster, but I'm running a business here, so I need business space. When I moved in, I asked a question about the sprinkler system that's here for stopping fires because I'm in a building with hundreds of other offices and I have expensive technology inside of my own studio. So what would happen if someone at the completely other end of the building had a fire in their office or brought a candle or did something they're not supposed to do in the space? What happens if a fire starts or there's smoke down there at the other end of the building, several floors separate from me? Well, what happens is that the sprinkler system turns on in the entire building. So everyone gets wet because of one person's mistake. The same thing can happen on a shared web hosting platform. One other person on the server, one of thousands of other people on the same server, could cause a problem that slows down everyone else's websites. Now, many providers do have certain things in place to prevent this or to catch it and then stop it when they see it. 
the most common symptom you may see when this is happening is that your website will run extremely slowly. Even with all of your plugins and extra functionality disabled and using the default WordPress theme, those typical troubleshooting steps that you should take to try and figure out what's wrong on your site, if your site is still running extremely slowly, especially on the back end of WordPress, then it could be someone else's fault on the server. And when that's happening, your feed could time out. A timeout is when something tries to load your feed and it's waiting and waiting and waiting and eventually it gives up. Commonly, these timeouts are set at about 30 seconds, sometimes 60, sometimes 90 seconds, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. But what it's doing is it's waiting for it to load. And if it doesn't load within a certain amount of time, it gives up and says, sorry, I can't reach the RSS feed. And if your web server is running extremely slowly, then your RSS feed could time out. And thus, many of these other apps will give up and will treat your RSS feed as if it's completely inaccessible instead of simply waiting around for it to update at some point. If you run into this kind of problem, raise the issue with your web hosting provider and they may be able to fix it. They may be able to help you know if you're the one causing it, and they may even be able to suggest some things to check on your side. Back when I used to do web design for others, I had a client who had their website on a shared hosting provider, and I thought someone else on the server was abusing the resources, but no, it actually ended up being my client's site. And in fact, it happened to be some bad code I wrote in the theme that they were using on their site. So I had to go in and fix that. And the web hosting company helped me to figure that out a little bit. They didn't fix it for me, but they did say, hey, looking at your logs, it looks like this particular thing keeps happening over and over and over. And look, this has happened a thousand times in one hour. You better fix this. And that gave me some information to be able to fix it. Or if you are working with a third party web designer or developer, then maybe you could pass that information on to them and they could figure out how to fix it. So that's reason number four why you may not want to host your own podcast RSS feed, dangers on shared hosting. Again, these four reasons you may not want to host your own podcast RSS feed are number one, website stability, number two, bandwidth requirements, number three, feed volatility, and number four, dangers on shared hosting. Let's flip this around. Here are four reasons you may want to host your own podcast RSS feed. Whether you're using PowerPress, hand coding your RSS feed, or you're using some other feed creation tool, if the RSS feed lives on your site, you're hosting it yourself. And here's why you might want to do that. This is also repurposed from another blog post I wrote called Why You May Want to Host Your Own Podcast RSS Feed. Number one, ownership. When your podcast RSS feed is on your own domain, you own it. You can transfer it to another domain. You can use whatever software you want to create that RSS feed, or you can redirect that RSS feed to anywhere else. You're not at risk of third-party companies shutting down their service. After all, how long have we been theorizing that FeedBurner would fall, and it hasn't yet, or other companies and such, but you're not at risk because you own your feed, not those third-party companies. And if you're ever dissatisfied with the performance of your feed on your server, then you can take it anywhere else you want and never lose your subscribers. That's a huge benefit to hosting your own RSS feed, or at least the URL for your own RSS feed is that ownership. Number two, total control. Hosting your podcast feed on your server opens up a world of possibilities for how you generate and manage that feed. You can do anything you want with it. Your total control of your RSS feed lets you change media hosting as fast as a find and replace tool. And by the way, PowerPress has a great one built in. If you have been using a media host that has completely random URLs for every single episode, then you need to get a little bit fancier with a regular expression find and replace tool or just hire someone to fix that for you. You can also integrate any stats provider you wish, Blueberry, PodTrack, or someone else. When new RSS features become standard, it's also easy to implement these new features in your own RSS feed. You can change add or remove anything you want when you create and host your own RSS feed. And all of this can be done 
with powerful self-hosting tools like WordPress with PowerPress. And these tools often don't require you to know anything about RSS or XML or HTML or JavaScript, PHP, CSS, anything like that. But also with the right skills or instructions, you could even customize your RSS feed, maybe even the PowerPress RSS feed to support some of those edge technologies. You can't get that total control using someone else's RSS feed, or it might be really complicated to use someone else's RSS feed because maybe they don't have certain things built in, but you can add those into your own workflow if you have total control. That's number two. Number three reason why you may want to host your own podcast RSS feed, simple workflow. You should already have a platform for your podcast on a self-hosted website you own and control. I highly recommend WordPress, and this could be hosted on Bluehost, HostGator, SiteGround, or if you want to go for the higher end, look at something like WP Engine. And I have some links to these in the show notes for episode 270 at theaudacitypodcast.com slash host your feed. As your platform, this should be the home for your content. And if you use well-designed tools like WordPress and PowerPress together, then this platform can also be the tool to create your podcast RSS feed, and it's not complicated. A podcasting plugin like PowerPress allows you to continue your regular familiar workflow of blogging with WordPress and then add a simple extra step to turn that blog post into a podcast episode. It's like attaching a picture to an email. It can be that simple. This means your platform is where you create your blog, you sell your products and services, you engage with your community, and you create your podcast RSS feed without much extra work. It's all coming from a single website so you can manage everything in one place with all the features you want. And if you want the most simple workflow with your WordPress website, then consider using Blueberry Media Hosting with the promo code NOODLE, by the way, that gives you a free month with them. This allows you to not only create your text in WordPress, but also upload your media directly through WordPress, manage your episodes, and even automatically add ID3 tags. Now, Libsyn also has a WordPress plugin that simplifies the workflow if you're using their feed with WordPress. So it's not as black and white as it used to be. But the Libsyn plugin, at least right now, is still somewhat limited and it can't be retroactive with replacing all of your past podcast episodes that you did with PowerPress. And if you ever decide to move away from the Libsyn plugin, It can be hard to do that if you're tied in. And that's as of right now. They may change that completely in the future. So this is reason number three, simple workflow. Number four, extendability. When your feed comes from your own platform, it's also very easy to launch additional podcasts or offer additional feeds for that same podcast. Other media hosts may provide some of these features, but usually at extra costs. Maybe you need to sign up to have an additional podcast. Maybe you need to upgrade your storage or anything like that. If you use your website to create your podcast RSS feed, then you can use a single media hosting account, but use PowerPress to then give you multiple podcast feeds. For example, you could have one account with Libsyn, but then use PowerPress to create an audio edition and a video edition of your podcast, each with their own RSS feeds. Or you could use the same media hosting to power multiple podcasts, either coming from a single website or multiple websites. You don't easily get that kind of extendability with the feed coming from a media host. Yes, you can sometimes generate additional category feeds, but then you have to use FeedBurner to adjust that feed for your needs. And that means activating FeedBurner SmartCast, and you know what I think about that. But here's an example of a podcast company really doing amazing things all from their website, afterbuzz.tv. They host a large TV after show podcast network, and they are successfully generating hundreds of RSS feeds with PowerPress, all from one website. So it's fully possible, and it is very stable for them. They have that extendability because they're hosting their own RSS feeds. That's number four. Again, these four reasons why you may want to host your own podcast RSS feed. Number one, ownership. Number two, total control. Number three, simple workflow. And number four, extendability. If you'd like the resources and 
the links that I mentioned in this episode, then go to theaudacitypodcast.com slash host your feed. I'd love to hear from you in the comments section there on the show notes. What's been your experience with some of these things? Have you ever had a feed that broke, regardless of where you host that feed? And what has been your experience in trying to fix that? How did it affect you and your workflow? What do you think about owning your feed versus kind of semi-owning it through a third-party platform? And remember, ownership is not directly tied to where it's hosted. Ownership is tied to the freedoms you get and the control you have over that feed. So please comment on the show notes for episode 270 at theaudacitypodcast.com slash host your feed. Thank you very much for supporting the Audacity to Podcast, The Productive Woman, and Once Once Upon a Time podcast in the Podcast Awards. All three of those podcasts are finalists now, and we're getting ready for voting And the daily voting starts on Sunday, May 29th. So you'll need to vote every day for a couple weeks for your favorite podcasts. And if you're looking for some other suggestions or you want some daily reminders to vote each day, then go to noodle.mx slash podcast awards. That's where we will show you our podcast to remind you which ones to vote for, as well as some of our friends' podcasts, especially those from Podcaster Society. It's really exciting to see several members of Podcaster Society as finalists in the awards as well, and some of our other friends too that we'll be voting for. So go to noodle.mx slash podcast awards to see that list and sign up for daily voting reminders. And I promise you that's the only thing you'll get emailed. It's a completely separate email list that I set up only for this. So if you sign up there, you're not going to receive lots of other spam and stuff. You'll only receive stuff about podcast awards and supporting us. So go to noodle.mx slash podcast awards. And thank you very much for your support. I'm really excited about podcast movement coming up in July. If you'd like to go, then please use promo code NOODLE. That will save you $40 on your registration over at podcastmovement.com. I will be presenting there on how to make your podcast stand out. And I really look forward to the conversations I'll get to have with you and others in the hallways and at the booth because I am a sponsor there. So you can stop on my booth for information about Podcaster Society and my podcast reviews. So I'd love to see you and connect with me. Shake my hand, introduce yourself if we've never met in person. I look forward to seeing you there. Go to podcastmovement.com and use promo code NOODLE to save $40 on your registration. I have some great stuff in the works for Podcaster Society that will be open for new members on July 1st, but join the waiting list over at podcasterssociety.com so you'll get the announcement as soon as it's available and the possibility of getting an extra bonus. Right now, I'm working on some cool courses that will be exclusive to Podcaster Society that will teach you how to improve your content, how to improve your presentation, how to improve your production, how to improve your promotion, and how to improve your profit from your podcast. That's all going to be exclusive to members of Podcaster Society, opening July 1st, 2016 at podcasterssociety.com. Now that I've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools, it's time for you to go launch or improve your own podcast for sharing your passions and finding success. I'm Daniel J. Lewis from the audacity to podcast.com. Thanks for listening. The Audacity to Podcast is a proud member of Noodle Mix Network. Find more of our award-winning and award-nominated podcasts to make you think, laugh, and succeed at noodle.mx.